Hey guys, this is Karan here, and in this section we will be talking about biology of course, but specifically we will be talking about natural selection and population. Another thing we'll be talking about is other mechanism of evolution. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and see this PowerPoint presentation. I hope you like it. Hey guys, this is Karan here. I live in Saudi Arabia studying 10th grade in Yambu International School. Today in this section, we'll talk about natural selection in population, okay? So, the starting of the question is that how do you actually describe a person? Well, you, you, you use height, hair color, and eye color, and, or any more other traits. Now, these traits are basically often used in the description because they're the traits which is widely, uh, very widely among the humans. Now, in this section, we will discuss about how natural selection can act upon us, such as variation. So the key concept is basically the population. Now most of the people mix up population with individual living beings, such as this penguin over here one. Well, we are not talking about one individual penguin. We'll talk about every, the whole population of something. In this case, it's a penguin, so the whole population of penguin evolved. Okay? Second. Now, natural selection basically acts on distribution of traits. Now, basically, what's happening is the normal distribution as a bell-shaped uh, curve. Now, let's say you're standing in the crowd. Um, <clears throat> to understand the natural selection, let's say you're standing in the crowd. Uh, let's say this map over here was a crowd. Well, what do we do? Well, if you're standing in the crowd, there might be small, heighted people and huge people with huge heights right so to find the mean okay the highest frequency near the mean value which the graph if you drew the graph where short people short people tall people tall people tall people short 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 well if you need to find out the normal which is basically the half the mean mean of that graph now if you start graphing it it would basically look like this inverse of quadratic function almost inverse okay so you find out the highest frequency near the mean value, okay, right here. Now the frequencies decrease towards the each extreme extreme values. Now as you guys can see over here and here, they they uh, they keep on decreasing. That's the reason why they have a bell-shaped curve. Now traits are not undergoing natural selection because they have a natural distribution. Now natural selection can change the distribution of trait in one of three ways so let's go ahead and know, understand the one of three ways well microevolution is evolution within a population observable change in alice frequency okay we talked about alice frequency now uh, the second one is basically that can result from natural selection and as we move on we come across uh, natural selection which can take on one of three pathways so as you guys can see you have seen a natural selection graph which was bell shaped curve or we can say approximately inverse of quadratic function that we learned in algebra 2 so natural selection can take one of three pathways direct selection favors phenotypes at one extreme now if you forgot what phenotype is phenotype is basically uh, if you're short tall eye color and all those type of traits are basically known to be a phenotypes. So as you guys can see, since we are talking about the height, as right here, tall people, short people, and both extremes, they they have bell shaped curve. They go, they are decreasing in the north uh, extremes. Okay, so that's the reason why we call it a phenotype. Okay, at one extreme. Now, basically, the antibiotic drug puts the pressure on the population bacteria population so this is the original graph right here and here you have the mean mean value which is the approximate height of the whole crowd okay now if you take a example of penguin right here again there's there might be you guys can see this is short this is short this might be this is tall uh, then this is tall tall and if you take a if you take a if you draw a graph of that basically be looking like this so if you want to find the approximate height this is the approximate height of this so this dotted line over here 
is the low drug resistance, okay? And if we add antibiotic drug towards it on the bacterial population, now the distribution after the direction selection will basically look like this, okay? Right here. So this is the effect on high drug resistance right here, which is the bold line, bold blue line, and over here, which is uh, low drug resistance right here. So let's go ahead and move on to natural selection in population where the natural selection can take on one of three pathways okay so natural selection can take on uh, take one of three pathways first is basically stabilizing selection favors of intermediate phenotypes as you guys can see I have put in a picture and given you guys an example now the dotted line is the normal uh, the basic, as you guys can see, we can think it of parent function if we involve mathema mathematics in it. So this dotted line is the parent function, and when we, when you have woodpeckers and webs put pressure on gal fly population, okay, here is the webs, and this is the woodpecker. They put a pressure on it, and it compresses. Okay, the graph is basically compressing and increase. Uh, this is oh. This is basically uh, vertical compression and horizontal stretch. So you guys can see it's a hor so I think it's in horizontal stretch and vertical compression. Okay, but so as you guys can see, it puts pressure and it go it's compressed as you can. Okay, and it stabilizes the selection. That's the main type of it. And here, don't forget, guys, we are still talking about the phenotypes. Okay, so in our last slide. We'll talk about the other one of three pathways. The last one is basically destructive selection favors both extreme phenotypes. Okay, so this is this is the parent function, the dotted uh, dotted line over here, the bell ring shape graph or inverse of approximately inverse of quadratic function. Now, basically, the dominant adult males put pressure on young males in bunting population. And when it does that, the distribution, as you guys can see, the bold red line is the distrib distribution after the descriptive selection over here. So I just want to, uh, before we end this um, video, I want to talk about what is microevolution. Well, microevolution is a little evolution that changed in the Alice frequency of the population over the per time period. Now, Microevolution occurs on a small scale within a sing single population. One process is that one can lead to microevolution is natural selection. Now, natural selection can change the distribution of straight along one of three pathways that we just talked about. Okay, and one of them would be uh, directional selection, which we talked about. We gave an uh, we gave an ex example towards it. Then there would be a stabilizing selection where we talked about the wraps and woodpecker. And the last one that we talked about is the distributive selection where we had an example of male, adult male uh, putting pressure on young, uh, young adults. Okay, so this is type, uh, three types of selection and how um, it differs from each other. Now we can also conclude that th we, what we just talked about is the phenotypes of population, not the phenotype of individual, okay? And the phenotype of population may evolve because the graph, as you guys can see, this was our original graph, and each of them, it changes after some, it evolves after some of the time when you add some antibiotic drug or put pressure on them, or you can think it of good uh, pr putting pressure on gale fly population. In this section, we'll talk about other mechanisms of or evolution. Now, the key concept here is basically natural selection is not only mechanism through which population will involve. Now, gene flow is the most is the movement of Alice between the populations. Gene flow occurs when individuals join new population and reproduce. Gene flow keeps neighboring population similar. Low gene flow increases the chances that two populations will evolve into different species. As you guys can see over here on this chart, that gene flow uh, can keep population, neighboring populations similar. 
So this population to this population are very similar. Now here, as you guys can see on the um, on the legend that the red part, the dotted part, are the recovering areas, which is this, are the, all the recovering areas, as you guys can see. Now this, the green line, the green circle, as you guys can see, on the map is basically the radical distance from the nesting site. Okay? Now this basically, these three points help us in this, uh, this particular idea. So I uh, also involve how this is basically used. Now the next thing is genetic drift is a change in Alice frequency due to the due to chance. Now how? Well basically genetic drift causes a lot of genetic diversity. It is the most common in small population. No population of bottleneck can lead to genetic drift. It basically means that it can occur when it, it occurs when and when drastically reduce uh, population size. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that it basically, let's say you have a huge population. Let's say you have a population of 100 people. Okay, now dra drastically reduce population size basically means that if you have 100 people living in a city, it decreases to 50 people living in that city. So it reduces the population size. Okay, the next thing is the bottle neck effect is a genetic drift that uh, occurs after a bottleneck event which basically is like this now this is basically bottleneck effect as you guys can see I do, do it uh, demonstrated this idea with a diagram over here and this is the surviving population the founding of small population can lead to genetic drift well it occurs when a few individuals start a new population the founder effect is a genetic drift that cause occurs after start of new population. As you guys can see, now here, let's say instead of population here, I've demonstrated it with uh, flowers. Okay, so like I said, if you have 100 people living in a city, it decreases with 50. Now, as you guys can see, there's plenty of flowers in this garden. While well, this bird eats, uh, does a bottleneck effect on this flowers basically eats them takes them out plucks them out and as you guys can see the next thing you know is that from this much only this much flower has left now that's basically a genetic drift which can all you guys can see that it can have a negative effect over here because all we know is that now it's this then it may decrease now now we have decreased value and it may sometimes go to no flowers okay so we know that it's a negative effect and it's a genetic drift has a negative effect on a population like we just said well it basically is less likely to have some individual that can adapt okay so flowers as you guys can see couldn't adapt in that environment because of harmful allies can become more common due to a chance well harmful allies such as birds okay now now we come across sexual selection occurs when certain traits increase mating success okay that means that if plants start produ reproducing more and more plants we might have uh, we can balance the uh, bottleneck effect out so it wouldn't bother us but now it does bother us so how we can improve this by as mating success so section selection occurs due to a higher cost of free reproduction for females now male produce many sperms continuously females are more limited in potential offspring each cycle okay so as you guys can see I've demonstrated it with the diagram um, now male basically the key concept is male uh, which the gametes the sex cell which is the sperm can reap can can because of germ cell we talked about this in the previous section yeah you have germ cell and anything is added up to it and becomes a uh, sex cell which is the sperm cell Okay, now it it may it con produces uh, the m as many sperm as m possible, but for females it's different. Each time they re uh, reproduce an offspring, they have more or less chances of producing offspring every single time. Now there is two types of sexual selections. The intrasexual selection basically is the com competition among the males, and intersexual selection which basically the male displays certain traits to females. 
Now, as you guys can see, I have demonstrated with the diagram over here. Okay, now this is basically a snake eating, okay, a bird. 